Welcome to Abergavenny Food Festival, my absolute favorite food festival. And if you have a look at the rest of my YouTube channel, I've been to quite a few. The entire town of Abergavenny in Wales transforms, with certain areas of the town, such as the castle, the priory courtyard, Tiverton Car Park, Brewery Yard, and the Market Hall itself being home to over 180 official stallholders. In addition to these official exhibitors, you also have a lot of the local businesses in town setting up their own stall outside their cafes and restaurants to participate in the street food atmosphere. The vibes, rain or shine, is all about the food. And if you're a food lover like me, it is a must visit. It's definitely a fixed date on my annual calendar. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of Abergavenny Food Festival along with my top recommendations. If you're watching this video and disappointed that you missed out, don't worry. Like I said, this is an annual event and to be honest, from my experience of coming here for the last number of years, there's a lot of regular stall holders that return year on year. Also, a lot of these stall holders don't just limit themselves to the Abergavenny Food Festival, but appear at a lot of street food pop-ups or even have permanent bases. So for all of my recommendations, I'm going to be popping links to social media in the description below. If there's something you'd like the look of, you can go ahead and follow the exhibitor to see where they are next. Don't forget, if you find this video informative and if food is kind of your thing, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post videos of my favorite places to eat on a regular basis that you won't want to miss. If you come to Abergavenny Food Festival and you're on limited time, your first stop should be the lower brewery yard as this is where the main hot street food section is. There's some spillover of hot street food at the castle section as well, so have a look at the map which is on flyers provided that come with your booking so you don't miss out on any places that you would want to visit. Our very first stop this year was a must-visit spot for me and thankfully they are a regular staple at Abergavenny Food Festival so I look forward to visiting them every year. Nixon Farms Penmin K Welsh Black Beef and Lamb. I know they also do other pop-ups like the Cardiff International Food and Drink Festival. They do either lamb, pork or beef over chips or in a baguette. I highly recommend having it over what Nixon Farms themselves call proper chips. Thick cuts of perfectly cooked potato, brown on the outside and soft on the inside. My top recommendation is the lamb, which has that rich signature lamb flavor and is perfectly cooked and meltingly soft. A simple and classic British dish that might seem less interesting in comparison to the international stalls in this area, but trust me when I say that this is an unmissable stall holder. By the way, as a top tip of mine, make sure you get here early. They are known to sell out quick. After that, I had to go to my second unmissable stall, which was Beefy Boys. Beefy Boys not only have permanent locations in Hereford, Cheltenham and Shrewsbury, but they also do pop-up locations all around the UK. I've had Beefy Boys a number of times at both their permanent Cheltenham location and also several pop-ups, but I do have to say that they bring the top chef to Abergavenny. Just look at the juice squeezing out of this dirty boy burger their signature award-winning burger which comes with bacon beef dripping onions dirty mayo and American cheese I've had beefy boys two times at Abergavenny food festival and both times it was legitimately the best burger I've ever had even better than when I went to their permanent location at Cheltenham if you see beefy boys doing a pop-up near you don't skip it. If you want to know more about the stall holder, I do have a video all about Beefy Boys on my channel if you want to go check that out. Next up, we have Walk and Roll, which I've had before at a street food circus event. They serve up Vietnamese sandwiches called Bun Mi. Last time we had Walk and Roll, I had the hoisin pork belly, but this time we had the lemongrass chicken. 
With banh mi, it is all about the bread, which is French baguette style, because the origins of banh mi come from the French colonization of Vietnam, where French baguettes were combined with local Vietnamese ingredients to make this staple and hearty sandwich. The baguettes used by Walk and Roll are toasted perfectly and so soft and delicious. I rarely obsess over bread, but it really is the star of this dish, and I definitely did prefer the lemongrass chicken over the pork belly. If you've never had lemongrass before, it has a bright citrusy flavor with a hint of ginger and a subtle herbal undertone. It's refreshing and is often used to add a zesty kick to Southeast Asian dishes. The acidity of the lemongrass chicken cut through the fattiness of the mayonnaise used in the sandwich. Combined with the cucumber, pickled vegetables, chili oil, and garnishes, you do get such a fantastic balance of flavors that marries with that beautiful bread. If you've never had Vietnamese food before, trying bun mi is a really good start, as it's Vietnamese flavors in a familiar sandwich form. My next big recommendation is Bab House Mex, which have permanent locations at Newport Market and Berry Good Sheds. Bab House Mex is so good that as I was eating this, I couldn't help but do a little happy dance. My background is that I was born and raised in California before moving to the UK, so Mexican food is something that I grew up with and ate a lot of, especially birria. I'm telling you right now with absolute seriousness that the ladies of Bab House Mex make birria tacos that match up to California standards. I know that sentence sounds crazy, and maybe I've just been away from my home state for too long that my standards have slipped, but I genuinely stand by that statement. You can see here that they start off with gooey cheese on the hot plate. Melting away and getting a slightly crispy edge, she dips the corn tortillas in this spiced and flavorful oil before adding the 18-hour smoked and braised beef that has been cooked in a rich and flavorful spice stock that is usually made with Mexican dry chilies. I don't know the secret recipe of Bab House Mex's birria. But usually you're going to get some garlic, cumin, cloves, peppercorns, and bay leaves as well. Surprisingly, even though it looks super red, it's actually not that spicy at all. Just a little bit of heat, but I would say it is mild, so is definitely enjoyable for most people. There's a bit of onion and garnish here for some texture contrast, but the main star of a birria taco is the dipping consomme they give on the side. This consomme is what the beef was cooked in, so it is a flavor bomb. You want to dip your tacos into this stock, and for the brave, drink any leftover consomme at the end. I would recommend this dish to anybody, and this is a must-get at Abergavenny Food Festival. The ladies are typically here on an annual basis. Those were my top recommendations from Lower Brewery Yard, but we had a few other places that I'm going to show you just to highlight the huge variety you can get at Abergavenny Food Festival. From Noba Kitchen was the first time I had a kara, which are these West African fritters made from beans. We also got some fried plantains, which are like bananas but a bit starchier and less sweet. Another Abergavenny Food Festival staple is La Grande Bouffe. Which entices you in with these giant pans of tartiflette and sausages. Tartiflette is a French dish of sliced potatoes cooked with creamy herb boursin cheese and smoked bacon. Super indulgent, and you can't go wrong with cheesy, creamy, herby potatoes. Top with a French sausage that has been cooked in wine gravy, and you get a dish that no one can hate. Speaking of cheese, the Cheese Boys satisfied my perpetual craving for brie with their fried breaded brie served with some pomegranate to cut through. There were also other vendors I recognized from previous food festivals, such as Caralan Caravan, Sin Nombre, Rebel Crumble, and Bao Selecta, which are featured in my Street Food Circus Forest Festival video. Cardiff Doe and Co. and Mighty Sawshell Crab from Cowbridge Food Festival, El Cabron Tacos, which is in my South Gloss Food Festival visit, and Meat and Greek, which I try out at Cardiff Food and Drink Festival. Yeah, I wasn't lying when I say I go to food festivals, so trust me when I say that Abergavenny is without a doubt the top one. 
Outside of hot street food, there are so many producers here with goods that you can buy from to take home, such as puddings, sauces, meats, preserves, cheeses, desserts, and more. Every year, we always make a stop at Cafe Cannoli, which makes some of the best cannolis in the area. This Italian dessert has a deep fried pastry shell stuffed with sweetened ricotta cheese, one of my favorite desserts that isn't too sweet at all. There's a variety of flavors, but you have to go with the original ricotta. Classic is definitely best here. When Andy Williams sings, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I don't think of Christmas, I think of Abergavenny Food Festival. There are so many of my unmissable favorite stall holders all in one town year on year. This event covers two days and if you can, I would totally book tickets for both days as there is so much to eat here that you can't get it all done in just one day. You do have to pay to get in and it costs us £16 per adult for one day, but I would definitely say it is well worth it. Not only do you have access to the amazing street food, but also make some purchases from incredible producers and even sit in the audience for some food talks from local celebrity chefs. Even though there are some food festivals out there that are free entry, I definitely did not begrudge the entrance fee. If you found this video informative, make sure you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. It would really mean a lot and inspires me to continue sharing my passion of food with you. So, have you been to Abergavenny Food Festival before? Have you tried any of these stall holders? Let me know in the comments section below. If you've never had any of these before, which one do you want to try the most? Let me know. Until next time!